In this episode of an in-depth look, I'm going to go deep into OpenDNS and maybe why you should be using OpenDNS for your network. The alternate title for this episode was, is, hey, look at OpenDNS. How awesome is this? How come I never knew about this? OpenDNS, in this episode of an in-depth look. I'm going to assume that most of you probably know what DNS is. If you don't, hit the pause button and then go Wikipedia DNS and then come back. Quick summary is it helps you resolve IP addresses to names. If you browse the web, you're using it. If you send emails, you're using it. So I've always just used the DNS provided to me by my ISP, who happens to be Comcast, which, you know, sure. I thought DNS was DNS, no big deal. And then. Lately, there's been some talk about OpenDNS and how it was patched against against a vulnerability that had come out that a lot of the main ISPs hadn't patched against yet. Some poisoning issues where someone could type in a, in a, a URL and a, a poisoned DNS server could give you a bad record and send you to a site that was either bogus or a phishing site or something like that. And that kind of piqued my interest, so I thought, well, I'll go check out this OpenDNS thing, see what this is about. So I jumped to OpenDNS.org, and the thing that immediately struck me right away is they put their DNS IP addresses, their IP addresses right there at the bottom of the page. So there was no hoops to jump through, no account to sign up. If I wanted to start using OpenDNS, I could. And it was fairly evident to me pretty quickly that one of the advantages to doing that would be OpenDNS seems to have um, regional DNS servers, which for, for me, I'm in the Seattle area, and they have a uh, data center here in Seattle. And they have a bunch of one, other ones uh, around the United States, and they're adding them around the world. And so it was fast. I wouldn't say I noticed a huge difference, but it did seem to me that my name resolution was snappier. So I stuck with that for a couple of weeks, thought, hey, this is neat. And it kind of struck me. I went back to OpenDNS's website, and I saw that there was an option to make an account. And I thought, okay, well, what does this account do? What's the benefit? And I, I had some assumptions that I, I didn't really quite understand it. So I went and I created an account at OpenDNS, and I learned quite a few things. Now, I, uh, my day job is I'm an IT consultant, and uh, one of the things I have a lot of issues with is uh, phishing and viruses and, and malware sites that my clients accidentally stumble upon. <clears throat> OpenDNS has the ability, once you create an account, you give it your IP address that your DNS queries will be coming from. So in my case, I uh, configured my router, and I said, router use these DNS servers instead of the Comcast DNS servers. And then I went to OpenDNS and said, okay, OpenDNS, here's my IP address. Now, like most of you on a DSL or cable modem or some sort of home broadband, your IP address is dynamic, it changes. Not an issue. OpenDNS makes a client available for Windows, Mac, and Linux that you can load on your machine, and it basically goes back and reports to OpenDNS when you have a new IP address. So they automatically get the update, and they always know what network number you're coming from. Once they have your IP address, you can do things like enable filtering. Maybe you're a parent and you don't want your children going to sites that aren't appropriate for children. Or maybe, like you're, you're like me, and you only have adults in the house, you don't care what they do, but you do want to protect against malware and phishing sites. So I have mine currently set to like a low moderate level that basically just prevents accidental malware sites and things like that, which is, I'm not too worried about that for myself, but it's nice just in case something were to happen. So that's a pretty nice feature. And then I could ratchet it up from there. Like for my clients, I might take it up one notch further because they have, they have concerns about that. I can even lock it down. I can break it out and I can say, okay, well, I don't want malware sites, but I also want I also want to turn off social sites like MySpace and Facebook, which I have a lot of clients ask me for, and so that's really great. And then, just for the pure geek factor, I can also turn on statistics, so I can see what kind of records I pull, what my heavy usage times are, uh, the types of uh, the types of queries, and which ones are bad, and which ones are phishing sites that have blocked, and things like that. I don't really see a practical value with any of that stuff, other than for the pure geek factor, which for me is enough. So I went ahead and. Uh, played with that a bit. I've only been doing it for a couple of days, so the stats that I'm showing you right now are uh, they're, they're just uh, for like the last four or five days that I've only been doing the, uh, the stat tracking. The other thing OpenDNS can do is, uh, and some people don't like this, it's, it's opt-in. 
you don't have to use it, but if you mistype a URL, it can do URL search correction. It basically it it uh, will tie in with Google and it will suggest the correct URL, and then they put an ad along the top, and that's kind of where they make their money. I don't really have an issue with that. I find that service actually be kind of handy because uh, I mistype a lot. I'm a I don't know, I fat finger a lot of things. So. I like that. I don't really have an issue with that. Some people, they don't like the advertisements with the redirects and things like that. I understand. You can turn it, actually, you have to turn it on. It's not even on by default, so you're okay there. Something else really kind of cool that OpenDNS does is because they're managing your DNS for you, you can do some DNS tricks. You can do like um, short names for things. Uh, for example, if I type in JB right now, my web browser, it sends the DNS query to OpenDNS for JB and then it brings back jupiterbroadcasting.com. Uh, I can put in other things. I put in some, some support sites that I have mar for my clients that I have to go to frequently. It's uh, a long, complicated URL. Not even an issue anymore. I type in the support URL, just like a really abbreviated version, and I'm there. Um, I've set up a few for my wife, too. It's actually a pretty handy feature. And because it's done at the DNS level, it's it's better it's better than a bookmark because it's on every device. It's on my it's on every machine. It's on my popcorn hour. I mean, it's it's everywhere. My PS3, everything has that DNS stuff. So it's really a global solution. Um, and if you could, if you had a large corporate network, you could point your corporate DNS service to forward to Open DNS. So you could run internal DNS, and then your server's DNS could look up to Open DNS, and they could take advantage of those same features. Very nice. Some background on OpenDNS. Uh, it was started back in uh, 2006, July of 2006, I believe. Uh, it was founded by one of the guys that originally worked at CNET, and they brought in some venture capital to get some money flowing. And now they sort of sustain their business with the ads that I mentioned with the uh, with the URL suggest page. Uh, I think they use Yahoo ads on there. And uh, some other information about OpenDNS is that despite the name, that doesn't really mean open source, though I do believe that everything runs on a farm of Linux servers, a pretty sophisticated farm of Linux servers that use a lot of DNS magic to uh, get you the best results from the fastest servers possible. And I think those are all mostly bind servers. I believe they have a mix in there. And uh, they're all always kept up to date and fully patched, which is really nice, especially when you're talking the bind DNS server. So I really was impressed with OpenDNS. I think for the most part, it's got to be what everybody needs because you don't have to have stat tracking. You don't have to have the, uh, the um, redirected suggestions when you typo and things like that. If you want, you can just take care. You can just take advantage of a really fast... Uh, up-to-date, up-patched DNS service. Um, so I think for the most part, I don't know in which scenario OpenDS wouldn't work for you, but maybe there is one, so if there is, leave me, uh, if you have some bad experiences, leave me a comment at the YouTube video at youtube.com slash jupiterbroadcasting, or shoot me an email, chris at jupiterbroadcasting, and tell me your experiences with OpenDNS. Maybe you've got something that I don't know about. Just saying. That has been known to happen a couple of times. Not a lot, just a couple of times. This episode of An In-Depth Look was sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Starting at just $3.99 per month, Linux shared hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99.9% .9 uptime, 24 by 7 support, and free access to GoDaddy hosting connection. The place to install over 30 free applications sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan and website. Plus, as a viewer of An In-Depth Look, enter the code Linux, that's L-I-N-U-X, when you check out and save an additional 10% on any order. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your PC of the internet at godaddy.com. Just a quick note for everyone, with the holidays next week, uh, our release schedule will be pretty light, if maybe non-existent for the next week. Um, probably going to be back the week after Christmas, maybe after the first of the year. Kind of depends on how holiday things go with families and whatnot. Both Brian and I uh, have lots of different family commitments that we do throughout the holidays. So we don't really plan to release much, uh, but you never know. Something might strike our fancy, so keep checking back on the site. But if you don't see anything new, use this opportunity maybe to go back and catch some previous episodes that you've missed. There's always Bear's Tasty Check Out, which is a fun one when you're, if you've got a little time off and you just want to maybe sit back and drink a brew with us while we review one of your favorite beers. Check out Bear is Tasty and uh, check out some of the previous episodes we've done. You can find them all at jupiterbroadcasting.com and youtube.com slash jupiterbroadcasting. Everybody have a happy and safe holidays, and follow me on Twitter. See what I'm doing during the downtime at twitter.com slash chrislas.